man. He's playing tricks with me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many people are excited to be in the house this morning? Let's shout hallelujah. Amen. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Don't wait till you receive email transfer of $1,000 before you say, oh, praise God. Don't wait for that. Amen. Don't wait till the government sends you a check, $3,000. I don't even know why they sent it to me and you didn't call them that maybe you made a mistake. Don't wait till that till you thank God. Don't wait for that till you thank God. God deserves our thanks and our praises at all times. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. With a smile, God is good. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, we need to have accountability. In the sense that, especially those that are married or those that are in, you know, any kind of uh, relationship or the other, find someone to be accountable to. That when they see you and you're not happy, let them, you know, uh, tickle you till you laugh. Amen. It is not uh, a good thing to just sit there and wear a long face. Sometimes we don't know that we are doing that because we are lost in thought. We are thinking, oh, oh God, when are you going to do this? When will you do that? Oh Lord. No, 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 no. God is good. God is good. No matter how bad you have it, someone has it worse than you. <laughs> Amen. No, no. <laughs> someone said, those who know how to think will know how to thank. If you can think, you know, think, thank. Amen. <laughs> those who know how to think will know how to thank God. <laughs> Amen. All of a sudden you realize, no, 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 no. Why am I feeling like this? God is good. You look around you and say, man, look in the mirror, man, God is good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Perfect height, you know, everything, God is good. Amen, right, brother? Perfect height, amen. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> amen. I always long to be tall. Now I thank God I'm this height, amen. Uh, I appreciate those of you taller than me. God bless you. <laughs> but I thank God for his gift of my life. <laughs> Amen. Why should I envy what you have? Amen. God, God is good. God is good. God is good. This morning we'll be talking about the healing power. We're still on the theme, I am free from sickness and disease. I am free from sickness and disease. At the rate at which we're going, diseases or sickness should become illegal in your home. As in, there's this, you're not meant to be here. What are you doing here? No more excuses for sicknesses. Oh, it's because of my age, or it's because I'm too young, it's because I'm too old, it's because I'm, you know, no, no, no more excuses. Because the Bible clearly shows us, and we've been going through that in the course of the month. I'm free from sickness and disease. No excuse is tenable. No excuse at all. I heard the story of an evangelist those days in, in, in England. I think one of the Wesley brothers. At the age of 90, he was still riding on a horseback. <laughs> and it's pushing you up and you know up and down at the age of 90 let's not make excuses no it's revelation once we get the revelation of the word we are we are standing on a solid foundation of a life of a life free from sickness free from diseases, and when they stumble across our path, we know what to do. Send them back to where they came from. Hallelujah. This morning, we're looking at the healing power. But before we go into that, let's remind ourselves from Psalm 107, verse 8 to 11. Psalm 107, from verse 8 to 11, and I read, 
Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. How many people want to say thank you, Jesus, this morning? Amen. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. He, for he satisfies the what? Longing soul. Are we there? Psalm 107 verse 8. I'm reading from verse 8 to 11. For he satisfies the longing soul. Not the soul that is present in services. But the longing soul. How many, how many of you know what it feels like when you're so hungry? Especially on Sunday afternoons. You know, you know those Sunday things. And your mom is just cooking. You don't know what she's cooking. You know, but you know you're hungry. And you're smelling something good. And you're just waiting. You're tapping, you know. You, <laughs> you start singing. You're tapping. You're doing everything. You're just anticipating the food. And then you begin, you cross over, mom, I just want to say hi, good job, you know, good job, you know. And you're seeing everything progressing. And all of a sudden, you, you now begin to hear plates coming out. I say, okay. <laughs> okay, many people understand what I'm talking about. And you see that, wow, it's getting close to food eating time. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and then they bring the food. And they serve the food on the table. But then she says, no, don't touch it, we have to pray. And you're like, okay, already, let's pray. You know that anticipation you feel when you're hungry for food? In order for us to receive from God, we need to have that kind of a longing. A casual approach to God will receive a casual result from God. God knows my heart. Whether he gives me or not is up to him, you know, Non-challenge will not receive, will not enable you to receive anything from God. God satisfies the thirsty soul, those that are hungry for him. That's why Apostle Paul was different from the others. He was hungry. He was hungry. Within a short while from being born again, he already began to have disciples. He already began to do miracles. He already began to teach other people. The only difference is he had the longing, the longing. God, I want to know you more. Philippians 3.10, that I may know you more. I want to know you more. So every time we approach the Lord's table, either by the communion or especially in a message, you know, in, in, in a Sunday service, a Thursday service, or when you're reading your Bible, that longing must be there. I'm looking forward to what I'm going to learn today. I'm looking forward to God speaking to me. Who I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to it today. And you always receive. Every single time. I've been in places where people, some people believe God has left the place. But God has been there all the while. All that time he has been there. But it the difference is some people, they have checked out mentally. They are just there now. It's just, it has become a routine for them. So they don't experience God anymore. Some people might be falling around them and say, oh, that message today was powerful. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it was good. It was okay. I think pastor has lost the touch, you know. I, <laughs> I think, I think, you know, I, I don't know. But and they're looking at you like, seriously? God spoke to me today. How didn't you hear that? It is the connection. Eli and Samuel were in the same house in 1 Samuel chapter 1. But God spoke to Samuel. Even when he didn't hear, he kept calling him, Samuel, Samuel. But Eli was there. All this while he was there, maybe waiting, God speak to me, God, God, is that you? No, okay, is that you? No. <laughs> but he kept speaking to Samuel. It is the heart. My dad's a pastor. I've been in the church for a long time. I, I, that's why I like to remind myself every now and again, every time, as often as I can, why am I doing what I'm doing? Because it can easily become a routine. And that's where religion now kicks in. Why are you going to church? Um, why won't I go to church? Because I have to go to church. Uh-oh. 
Why are you serving God? Um, because the, the church needs help. Uh-oh, you've missed it. I hear some people, they say, oh, I want to come to your church. I say, hey, it's not my church. And I continue talking. I want to come and help you in the ministry. I say, no, if you're coming to help me, stay where you are. <laughs> I don't need help. In the sense that, if you're coming with the mindset that you're coming to help me or help God, you're already coming with a prideful mind. But if you're coming that you want God to come and help you, now you're now speaking the right language. Because if you're coming to help anybody, when you feel like you're not being appreciated, what will you do? You leave. I'm coming to help you. You're not appreciated. I leave. But if you know that you're coming for God to help you, ah, man, <laughs> no matter what happens, you remain planted. You remain rooted. Just a few reminders to help us to readjust wherever we need to adjust. Amen. It takes a meek spirit to receive from God. Meekness. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. The Beatitudes or the Sermon on the Mount, as some people say. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 and verse 5. Verse 3 and verse 5. And I'll read the Amplified Version, please. Verse 3 and 5. It shows us that in order for us to inherit heaven, we need to be meek spiritually. And in order for us to inherit the earth, we need to be meek in our soul as well. And I will explain. Let's read it together. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, and then we'll now read verse 5 together. Okay, let, let's read this one together. <laughs> okay. I was the one making you say, blessed, happy to be envied, and spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward conditions, are the poor in spirit, that is, the humble who rate themselves insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Now verse 5 together. That's right. Blessed, happy, blithesome, joyful, spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward conditions, are the meek, that's the mild, patient, long-suffering, for they shall inherit the earth. Amen. To summarize, one group of people in verse 3, they inherit heaven. And then, verse 5, another group, they inherit the earth. But the same thing, but some, the verse 3, those who inherit heaven, they are meek in spirit. And those that will inherit the earth, in verse 5, they are meek in their soul. The mild, patient, long-suffering that will inherit the earth. What does that mean? It means that in order to reign both in heaven and on the earth, it takes meekness. The spiritual meekness part is, you see, <laughs> Amen. You know, many times when we are receiving or when we come to church for God to teach us and whoever he chooses to use as a vessel, many times if we're not careful, we exalt ourselves in our heart in the sense that we just tune off, we shut down. What do I want to learn from this person? Maybe sometimes their, their English might not even be good. Their means of communication might not be good. That does not mean anything. <laughs> Amen. It does not mean anything. So in order for us to receive every single time, and I always try to check myself, especially when I go to receive under somebody else's ministration, no matter who they are, so far as God has put them there, I see God. I don't see them anymore. I was telling the leaders, you know, last week and the week before, I believe that any of the leaders in this church can do what I'm doing. Because all it takes is being connected to the Holy Spirit and him putting you in that office. It's very simple. 
Please, this is the last Sunday in the month of October. And my heart desire is that nobody should still be battling any kind of sickness or disease. Or even when it comes, because the Bible says, he who stands should take heed lest he falls. All it takes is one visit to the doctor. And all of a sudden, the faith begins to shake because they've given a, 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 a diagnosis that you were not expecting. That's why these words must be hidden in our hearts. He who stands should take heed, lest he falls. I've seen people, they were happy, they were excited. It was, it was a routine checkup. They went and they just got the news. And doctors have a way of delivering a bombshell, you know. <laughs> uh, and then that's it. Now is what is inside of you that will now come out. Hallelujah. So let's, when we come to the presence of God or we are approaching his word in our homes, wherever it is, remember that is God. The word is God. Reverence the word, honor the word of God, and you receive from the word. Praise God. Now, let's get into our text for the day. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. Remember, we're talking about the healing power. Proverbs chapter 4, from verse 20 to 23. And we can revert back to New King James now. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. And I read, my son, which includes my daughter, amen, all my children, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, find them, and health to all their flesh. Verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. My children, give attention to my words. It means that the words of God can be everywhere. We can even, you know, put them as posters everywhere. But if we don't pay attention, you will not even notice what the word is saying to you. Give attention. Incline your ear to my sins. Don't tune up. Incline your ears. Pay attention to what God is saying to you. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. There are, there are many things that get our attention these days. Many things that steal our attention. Many things that draw our attention. Some people is cars. Once they get into cars, the car world, they, 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 they are lost. Some people, it's, it's sports. Those things are good. They're good. But they are not meant to take the number one position in our lives. It's amazing how some people can quote all the stats of their favorite team. But they say they have memory issues when it comes to remembering scriptures. I don't know, Pastor, please pray for me. I think my, my mind, my, you don't have, you, you just need to pay attention. They will quote from 1974 up until now. They've never lost the game and they won this and this and this and every single thing. But they cannot retain Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. Pastor, it's too long. I remember my son. I, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember my son. The rest, I don't know. I don't know. No, 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 no. We need to pay attention. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. You know, 
it's amazing when the Bible says they are life to those who find them. So it means we just don't stumble across revelation. We don't stumble across the word of God. <laughs> you have to find it. I'm sure most of us played hide and seek when we were young. Amen. Looking for the other person. Some people that have kids now, you're still playing hide and seek. <laughs> I can only imagine. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But with the word of God, we need to find, hunt after it and find it. Our brother shared his testimony a few weeks ago, beginning of this month, that, you know, he was sick, he was falling ill, he knew the natural progression of that illness. But this time, all he kept hearing in his spirit was, I can never be sick. I can never be sick. I can never be sick. And instead of the normal progression of that sickness, of that ailment, it left before the normal time. He has found the words concerning healing. The disciples were with Jesus for a long time. They were seeing all the miracles he was doing. He turned five loaves, two fishes, fed thousands of people, all sorts of miracles. But there was a point where Jesus said, why are you hardening your hearts? They were going on a journey together and they forgot to take living. That they used to make bread or bread. They forgot to take bread. So he was now advising them. He said, beware of the living of the Pharisees. And then in their hearts they said, ah, is it because we forgot to take bread? That's why he's scolding us. And Jesus said, ah, don't you guys, didn't you realize that I multiplied five loaves? Don't you know that even if you forgot to bring food, I can still create food? By now, shouldn't you have realized that? Some people might be wondering, oh, if I were the one, man, with Jesus, uh, man, I would never doubt it. No, 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 don't be quick to say that. Don't be quick to say that. Because many times we have things right in front of us, but we don't pay attention. The month of October is so blessed that we have five Sundays. I believe someone even, they even say five Mondays or even five Tuesdays, I think, something like that. We, we've heard the word on healing many, many, many times. To a point where if you're not careful, it even becomes, okay, okay, I got it. I can never be sick. Okay, okay. Let's move on already. <laughs> let's not be quick to do that until the word is lodged in our heart we haven't gotten there yet until no matter how long the sickness tries to stay that you remain on that word no I can never be sick impossible we have not yet gotten it if you're still making excuses for any kind of pain or sickness or anything, condoning it, then we have not gotten it. There's no use celebrating half success. Let's get to that finish line when it comes to sickness and disease. Before you can now go out and begin to pray over people to be healed. Out of the abundance you've received, then you can now begin to give other people. Standing your ground. No, I can never be sick. No matter what it is, I can never be sick. Nothing changes that. Oh yeah, but this is hereditary. Your father had it, your father's father, your mother, your mother. I mean, I mean it's science. Are you not educated? It is still your choice. It's your choice. So when he says that, keep the words in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. When we find the word, it gives us life. Let me hear you say with boldness, I can never be sick again. 
in the name of Jesus. And he says, and health to all their flesh. Now, verse 23 now says, keep your heart with all diligence. Because when we talk about sickness and disease, it is not just physical sickness alone. Depression is, a, is sickness. Depression is sickness. Demonic oppression is spiritual sickness. Making you do what you don't want to do. Getting angry unnecessarily and you can't control yourself. That's demonic, that is spiritual sickness. Having sex with beings that you don't know in the course of the night and everything going through all of all, that's spiritual sickness. So when we say sickness and disease, it's not just physical. Say, oh yeah, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm, you know, I'm healthy, everything. Even my doctor tells me all the time, wow, you're very healthy. Oh yeah, you're healthy. Woohoo, I'm healthy. But you're always down. Always down. Every time. You're always down. You have to motivate yourself to be happy, joyful. You're always down. That is also part of what we are talking about. I don't mean going around, you know, town with your teeth. No, 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 no. I mean joy on the inside. You don't struggle to laugh when you need to laugh. It says, keep your heart with all diligence. The, the virtue of love. You see, when we talk about keep your heart with all diligence, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, that's what must be in our heart at all times all times. I'll give you an example. One of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is peace. So when the Bible says keep your heart with all diligence, it means make sure you are always at peace. Some people don't know when they lost their peace. They woke up in the morning, they were peaceful, they went to work, all of a sudden they got back home after a few hours and they just find that they're just all over the place. But they don't know when they lost it. That's what the Bible is saying. Keep your heart with all diligence. How diligent will you be in, in managing your money? I heard someone telling me, which is admirable, that she knows how much is in account at every point in time up until the last cent. I was like, wow, that is, <laughs> that is genius. <laughs> Amen. But how much more knowing the state of those virtues that God has given you? Am I walking in love? Am I joyful? Laugh now. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Am I at peace? So when you see something that's trying to unsettle you, you just step back. Ah, no, 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 no. Please, please. I look at you from a distance. What exactly is going on here? Because those virtues, my heart must always be properly kept. Many people come to church on Sunday like a car wash. You're washed, you're clean, detailed, and then you, you head out. By Sunday evening, you need another wash again. <laughs> Amen. But we can keep our hearts with all diligence. Those virtues that God has given to us. Don't allow any human being to be so powerful enough to steal your joy. I mean, you were so happy, and they just came and they opened their mouth and they said, you're foolish. All of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Wow. Wow. Don't give them that kind of power. It is part of what we're talking about. I'm free from sickness and disease. Keep your heart with all diligence. They say, you're foolish. Oh, wow. Thanks for your opinion. Wow, this is... This, this shows that Canada is a democratic nation. You know, that you can express your views without feeling that I'm going to punch you in the face right now. I, <laughs> I, 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 am, I am so happy to be in Canada. Praise God. And they're looking at you like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're supposed to be angry and fuming. And just, anyway, I'll catch you later, okay? God bless you. And you're just singing. 
Next time, when they're looking for someone to drag down, they just say, don't mind her. She, I heard it's not. <laughs> She's not all right. <laughs> Amen. You're keeping your heart with all diligence. You know, someone came and met me. I said, oh, pastor, you know, hmm, you don't know what people are talking, saying about you in town. And I know he was just lying. It was just one person that told him all that nonsense. Uh, but some people just need to be educated. Amen. So he said, ah, you don't know what, I didn't even bother asking, what, do, what are people saying about me? I don't need to know. How is that going to impact me in any way? Except attempt to steal my joy. If they were saying good things, they would go and put a review on Google online. <laughs> Amen. But usually it's those kind of negative things. So someone comes to tell you, oh, you don't, you, didn't you hear? What, what, what? Oh, I was at a party yesterday and it was just you they were talking. <gasps> really? Let me go buy you lunch. Tell me everything. Ah, you're wasting your money. You tell them, oh, okay, okay, nice. Thank you very much. Anyway, moving on. You don't need that. That is part of keeping your heart with all diligence. Diligence. Making sure that the fruit of love is still in oppression. So when someone is coming to gossip, you've not met our brother before, and someone comes to you and says, ah, I heard you are doing something with him. Ah, let me tell you all about him. This guy, already they are poisoning your heart. So you are not able to walk in love towards him if you're not careful. The wisdom to guard your heart is, no, 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 don't worry, thank you. Oh, he did that, okay, I'm sure it was those days, you know. I'm not saying you shouldn't apply wisdom. But all I'm saying is, we need to guard our hearts. Because the Bible says, for out of it flows or springs the issues of life. The issues of life. So if you allow any little thing to steal your peace, steal your joy, you know, or, or because of the way someone treated you, you refuse to be gentle towards the person. They spoke to you in a rude way, so you too, you respond rudely. Now you are no more gentle. Now you don't have that fruit of gentleness anymore. You did not guard your heart. You've allowed them to control you or manipulate you. Like some people will see contestants for elections. Amen. There's some people, if you want to poke them, you just know what to say. Praise them. You, you can see it in oppression. Just pray, oh, wow, I love you, so you're, you're an awesome person. And immediately, the person will say, ah, I love you too. You are just so amazing. You're so good. Or just tell them, oh, man, I, I don't like, your head is just too big. Oh, you have never liked you too. You're <laughs> Amen. You can tell the way they will respond just because they, 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 they are not guarding their heart. And if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. In the world that we live in, it is very, very important. In order for us to remain whole, remain free from sickness and diseases, remain free from pains, we guard our hearts, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, 24-7. Nothing should be able to take the fruit from you. Nothing. Nobody. Not your boss, not your colleague, not your employees, people reporting to you, not your spouse, not your children, not your parents, nobody. Nobody should be able to steal the fruits of the Holy Spirit because out of it springs the issues of life. The issues of life. Hallelujah. The issues of life. God gave us the cornerstones of divine health. And he said to us, I live a life of divine health because I have accepted God's word in my heart concerning divine health. Number two, I am following his principles on healthy eating and living. And what we're talking about this morning is based on number one and number two. And then number three says, I resist the devil's attempt to attack my body. With the truth from God's word. If we remain grounded in these three key things that are very broad, 
there is no way, no way we can be sick for a prolonged amount of time. The enemy might attack you and you might resist for some time. But if we stand strong in the word of God and what we've learned, there is no way we can be among those that will continue, remain in sickness or remain in diseases. You say, but, but pastor, you're talking about joy. Uh, what if I lose someone or I lose something? Can't I be sorrowful for a while? Oh, yes. The Bible says that. But there's time for everything. There's time to be sorrowful. If you go to a funeral and then you're laughing, you're not applying wisdom. They might bring another coffin up. <laughs> Amen. And they say, look who is, who is laughing now. <laughs> Amen. It's wisdom. But there is time to be sorrowful. But what we're talking about, it mustn't extend beyond the time that it is due. After the Israelites mourned for Moses, after a while, God came and said, okay, okay, now enough is enough. It's time to move on to the promised land. So it's not bad to be sorrowful. The Bible says rejoice with those who are rejoicing and mourn with those who are mourning. Amen. So don't say, oh, pastor said I should not, yeah, I should, no, 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 no. That's scripture. But what we're saying is it must go beyond what is due. Now you don't want to go to work anymore. I don't want to talk to anybody anymore. I just want to isolate myself. Nobody loves me. Nobody this, nobody that. That's sickness. That's disease. Glory to God. He sent his word and healed them. Psalm 107 verse 20. And delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word. He sent his word. My prayer for us is that whenever God sends his word, we'll be able to receive it. God sent his word to us, for example, in this church about a few months ago. And he said, no more toiling. God's word does not have an expiry date. If it does, then we shouldn't be reading the Bible anymore. <laughs> Amen. It should have been long expired. That same word, no more toiling, is still in operation for those that are still holding on to it. And I am. In the same way, when God speaks concerning our health and our healing, that word does not have an expiry date. If we believe. Adam worked morning. He, he, he relaxed in the afternoon a bit, went back to work again in the evening. But he wasn't complaining about back pains. He named all the animals that we see today. But he wasn't weak or tired. But we walk for eight hours, ten hours, and we allow the enemy to deceive us. Oh, it's okay for you to be tired. Back pains, it's okay. You know you've been driving a lot. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Those are lies of the enemy. Jesus was walking from one place to the other. He was never admitted in a hospital. Oh, Jesus, he's tired. You can't see anybody. You know, his leg swollen. You know, it's just, just too much dust everywhere. He has asthma. You know, it's just, uh, do you have an inhaler, Peter? <laughs> Nothing like that. You see, when we've gone through a, a, a prolonged season of degeneration, the truth begins to look like it is unrealistic. But when the truth was established, it was the truth. But because of many years of, you know, degeneration, now when we hold up the truth without, you know, uh, any smoke screen or without anything, it looks like, wow, that is not possible. But that is the truth. And it has always been like that from the very, very beginning. From the beginning. Like we said last week, 
when we begin to stand on the word of God, endurance is needed because uh, it will be a battle. The enemy will want to take it away from you. You need to hold on. I say, no, I cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. You might still be sneezing and, you know, I cannot be sick. I can. But one day, you, as it may, pass that test. Then it now begins to become easier and easier and easier. But the truth is always the truth. And I choose to hold on to the truth. God is bringing a revival to Canada. And Edmonton is playing a key role in that revival. He has been saying this for a number of years, but it's already happened. Some people won't notice until they begin to see people falling down on the streets. But it's already happening. It's already happening. The moment you see people standing up and saying, you know what? I'm going to believe what the word of God says. That's a revival that has broken forth. When you see people like the leaders of this church that meet every single Sunday to pray, for other people and for themselves, you will know a revival has broken forth. In the midst of conflicting responsibilities and everything, you will know. You will know that God is up to something. Because it takes the grace of God. Every single Sunday, it takes the grace of God. And these days, we won't go past an hour. Amen. It takes the grace of God. Don't watch, jump in and be a partaker of what God is doing. I've studied some revivals that have happened in the past. The Spirit of God moves. People get excited for a while. They see miracles. And people go back to the way things used to be. Because they didn't have a solid foundation in the word of God. That's why God said to me, the word, spend time, spend time, teaching, teaching. So when the spirit begins to move, we'll be able to discern the false from the true. We'll be able to stand strong and resist any attempt of the enemy to defile what God is doing. Because revivals will bring multitudes of people, all kinds of human beings, with different intentions, with different desires. But when we are properly grounded, we'll be able to know, no, 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 I'm not carried away by all these things. No. No. God has a plan. And you and I, we can take a stand and say, you know what? I am going to play my part. I'm not asking you for your money. No. Spend time in the word of God. Allow God to teach you from his word. School you. Prepare you. <laughs> uh, so when things begin to go very fast, you know you're already ready. You're ready for the flight. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Hmm. I was sharing with them on Thursday. Now many people don't know this. But the last common seed that we had, we actually had angelic presence in this place. You see, the amazing thing about spiritual things is, you know, I, I really don't like too much to wander down that path, you know, except at the right time or with people that I know are properly grounded because people can easily get lost in that world without the foundation of the word of God. But powerful things happened. Many things were shifted spiritually. And the rain that fell was not an ordinary one. Amen. Many things happened. You know, the Bible, you know, was scolding a group of people. It said, you know, you, you, you're not sensitive to know the times and seasons that you're in. They were being scolded because... Things have shifted, have changed, and you didn't even notice at all. Don't 
get caught off guard. You see, some people only say, ah, God is here. When all of a sudden we open this place and there are lots of people and they say, oh, man, the power of God is moving in this place. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Don't, don't get carried away. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. I've seen many things. And I know that God has his timing for everything. Uh, God is moving now, and he'll continue to move in the same way in the future. But there's time for everything. Times and seasons. <laughs> the Holy Spirit told me something. He said, for an anointed person, things will happen at the appointed time. Anointed, appointed. Anointed, appointed. That's why it takes patience to walk with God. Anointed, appointed time. Don't rush when you're walking with God. Don't rush. One step at a time. When he moves, you move. If he's not moving, you pause. You might seem like, wow, but everybody else is moving. Ah, don't worry. God has paused. You pause. Catch your breath. Because the next steps you might take, you might say, Lord, hang on. Hang on. You're going too fast. <laughs> Amen. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. It was supposed to have been done. Uh, Joseph must have been looking and said, oh, my brother Judah is married. He already has kids. People are, you know, everybody, they're inviting me to their wedding. All my brothers, you know, they're having kids, getting married. They're having businesses, blah, blah, blah. And he's still a slave. And then not only that, he now went to prison again. But he was catching his breath. Because by the time God now began to move, you, he literally would have to look in the mirror and say with his new dressing, ah, is this me? Remove his cap, remove ah, Joseph. This is you now. Hey. <laughs> Lord, what is this? Hello, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed the message. This month is our month of divine health. We're specifically talking about the fact that God said he will restore health unto us. We're free of sicknesses and diseases. I'm encouraging you to join us. Uh, the word of God is very powerful. The word of God gives life. It gives us strength. It empowers us. Whatever you might be going through, whatever sicknesses, whatever diseases you might have been afflicted with, believe God, and I am believing with you, that you will be perfectly restored this month in the name of Jesus. If you're in Edmonton, I encourage you to join us for one of our services, 9.30 a.m. on Sunday, 6.30 p.m. on Thursdays. We'll be exploring different things around divine health and being able to walk in divine health all the days of your life. If you're not born again, living a life with Christ is a beginning. It's a foundation for living a life of divine health. I encourage you to say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to please forgive me today. I ask you to cleanse me of all my sins. Strengthen me and give me the grace to live a life that pleases you. From today, I accept you into my heart and I decree by faith that I am born again. If you said that prayer with me, I believe you're born again, according to scripture. Write to us. We want to hear from you. Go on our website on the Contact Us page and send us an information. And would you know, uh, try our best to send you some materials that will help you grow. God bless you. Continue tuning in. And like I said, join us if you can. And I'm sure you have an awesome time. God bless you. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen.